subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates. Hey everyone, this is Anujwara and today we have a guest Tom Drake in the show and uh, he is a financial analyst. Uh, he knows a lot more about stock market investing and uh, where to which stocks to purchase and uh, where you should invest your money to grow your money, right? But here the interesting thing is he knows more about Canadian stock markets. So we will talk in detail about Canadian stock markets. See, I have done many podcasts for US specific, but I have never uh, tried to do podcasts for Canadian specifics. For So this is the first time that I am going to learn a lot of things about Canadian securities market. So welcome, Tom. So before we begin, I want you to introduce yourself so uh, our uh, audience can get to know about you. Uh, I'm Tom Drake. I I run the website uh, maplemoney.com and the podcast, The Maple Money Show. Uh, The the website's been around since 2009. The podcast has been uh, uh, first launched in 2018. So uh, both have been been pretty pretty helpful for, for reaching a lot of Canadians and uh, helping them with their personal finances. Okay. So uh, actually uh, when discussing about like financial markets in Canada, the thing that I have observed that when I say the term investment, most people believe that, oh, it's about real estate. So according to me, as far as I know, as far as I have observed so far, Real estate is the key thing for investment here in Canada because it has been, it has the real estate investments have given tremendous returns in the past five years. Especially if if I talk about Ontario, the return on investment is like skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. So for finance, uh, for financial market, uh, what do you think that why it is not that much uh, getting attention compared to real estate? it might just depend on, on who you're talking to there. There's uh, there's definitely a lot of people that, that focus on real estate. You hear that the markets in, in Toronto or Vancouver, and uh, you see these, these huge gains. It's, it's hard not to sort of be drawn to that, but right. uh, um, th- there's certainly a lot of good investment opportunities here in Canada. Um, maybe a little limited. There's uh, we've got sort of the financial sector and, and energy stocks, uh, so it's not quite as wide ranging as as a, as a U.S. market. Um, so you, you got to watch out for that a little bit, hmm. uh, because if if you're sort of investing too much in just Canadian stocks, hmm. you are missing a lot. You're missing sort of a, a a worldwide view, but you're also missing different sectors that Canada does, doesn't really have a whole lot of. Interesting. Um, what, what more did you want to know? just uh, compared to real estate? Uh, sorry you just want to know more about how it compares to real estate uh yeah actually uh the thing that uh, i would like to ask is that uh, uh real estate requires huge funds right and uh, for down payment you have to pay a big amount and still you have to pay a monthly amount for installments so rather than going for like real estate investments uh People can just invest in Canada Canada specific uh, index fund and get a nine to ten percent return, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. So why do uh, Canadians avoid? Uh, I mean, not all avoid, but as far as I know, uh, why people prefer more real estate and then and avoid like uh, index investing? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's that they avoid it I, for for the reason you just said. It's it's not easy to get into real estate investing. Right. Uh, pe- people may be more. Uh, interested in it it's 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 what's in the 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 news they can see uh year over year price increases in real estate um but uh i i think generally people are are into stock investing um whether they know it or not they might have a a mutual fund from their bank or maybe they've gone the other way and they're doing uh robo advisors Hmm. uh but but especially for the reason you said it's it's not easy to just hop into real estate investing Hmm. But uh, stock investing in, in all the different ways, you can basically start for nothing and, and, and right. set up uh, uh, biweekly or monthly uh, in, investments into that. So it's, it's 
I think much more accessible than, than real estate investing. Yeah, definitely. It is much more ex- uh, accessible. And uh, people talk about like rental income, like, for example, if you get if you invest in real estate, you get rental income. But mm-hmm. on like stock market investing, if you buy dividend stocks, you get dividend, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, I have observed that uh, people don't uh, actually very there are very few people who actually know the importance of dividends. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And here in Canada, I, I feel that we have a, a, a pretty good market for dividends because, uh, again, mm-hmm. it's financials and energy stocks these are just um, sectors that would kind of naturally have right. decent dividend stocks. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of uh, ability to get decent dividend yields, but also with 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 the real estate side, I I personally I it's not something I'm too into interested in getting into because mm-hmm. to 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 sort of get into that role of are you are you going to be the landlord are you going to uh, pay pay a property management company that there's so many right. uh, so, so much additional work in, in, involved in that um, it e- even when it comes to real estate I'm more interested in things like REITs uh, right. where similar to a stock you can invest in right, these, right, right. these larger yeah. companies. Um, so yeah, the, the direct real estate investing, uh, at least personally, isn't for me, but I don't mm. think it's for a lot of people. Um, mm. just, just that, that inability to get in easily, but also the, the amount of extra knowledge you have to bring to it. It's really, I, I look at real estate investing almost more like, uh, starting a business more than investing. There's, right. there's a skill set involved, capital involved. It's right. It, it, I, I think that the stock investing is much easier. And also, if you let's say if you wish to invest in real estate, you would prefer to invest in REITs, like which is we can call financial real estate. Yeah, it's just so much more uh, uh, simple. <laughs> you, you can buy <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you can buy a few REITs, and uh, um, I, I'm actually a, a huge fan of ETF investing in general. Right. But with REITs, um, it's just one of those things where th- there's only a few of them <laughs> when it comes to the big ones. So if if you were to right. buy a an ETF, uh, a REIT ETF, uh, which is an option. Hmm. But uh, it, it, when you look at what makes up that that ETF, uh, it's it's a handful. I think like five or six pretty much give you a, a large That's majority true. of what's in that ETF. So it's, it's just one of those times where I I don't recommend ETFs. It's it's a chance to avoid those fees, even if it's a fraction of a percent, but uh, hmm. and, and just get those REITs directly. Okay. Uh, as you mentioned about like uh, REITs, like Real Estate Investment Trust, uh, last uh, two months ago, I I was going through some of the best REITs of Canada. So then I came to know that the return on investments of uh, REITs, and uh, I'm talking about the historical returns, like 10 year, 15 year, so the return on investment of REITs and the Canadian index is almost uh, Canadian index. I mean, the Canadian stock market index is almost same. Like both REITs and Canadian stock markets have offered uh, around 9% return on investments uh, historically. So I think based on the inflation, uh, based on the historical inflation data, it is very good return. Mm-hmm. Um, right, because and, uh, and, the historical rate, uh, inflation is around two to two point five percent. Yeah, it's it is a good return, and and it's it, it may be similar to stocks, but at the same time, it's it's diversification. It's 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 making sure you're not just in mm. real estate or just in stocks. It's right. uh, so so even if historically they have been similar. Um, there's always the possibility that they won't be in the future. <laughs> so, right. so w- w- whichever one sort of uh, does better than the other, um, mm. you can't really predict the future. But uh, mm. ha- having that mix is is a, a a decent way just to have a little bit of diversification. Okay, okay. And and if we talk about like it's uh, not a topic of investment, but for like the if we talk about the future of Canadian economy, like uh, a lot of Im- immigrants are coming over here, like in thousands of uh, numbers. So uh, are you observing the same trend in Alberta too? Because uh, in Ontario there is a massive demand 
to get an admission and uh, study here in Canada, in Ontario? Uh, I, I don't look at the numbers right. too directly. It, it, so I only have my, my own personal experience in it. I don't, I don't follow the, the immigration, but uh, um, I, I assume it's, it's throughout Canada. Um, right. There's always a need for, for labor and, and skill sets and everything else. So um, yeah, I, I think, it, I think it can only help n no matter the province uh, right. um, to, to, to bring in people that'll, add to Canada uh, mm. with their skills and knowledge and everything. Right. right. And and based on that, uh, can we say that that's the reason one should consider investing in Canadian stock market because the consumption will keep, keep increasing? Yeah, exactly. Um, the, uh, again, the, the Canadian market itself is a little limited, but uh, uh, by sectors, but but certainly those sectors are going to increase. Uh, energy may increase <laughs> it's hard right. to tell how that's gonna look uh, uh nowadays with this sort of uh oil versus uh, other options and, and uh, the pricing yeah, right now, electric but, uh, electric cars and all yeah but but my hope for that is is that especially here in alberta is that we we learn to pivot and and not just rely on oil mm -hmm. um there's got to be uh again especially in this province there's got to be a, a bit of a look to the future um so we don't get completely left behind when, when people are, are tired of paying the, the current gas prices and everything. So <laughs> yeah, right, uh, it'll right. be interesting to watch that. Yes, yes, definitely. And uh, if you talk about like, uh, like as you just said about the oil, Canada has, uh, I'm not sure about the number, has a huge uh, ga oil reserve in the country, right? But it the country gives... Uh, uh, the crude to the United States and the U.S. refines, and then Canadians get all. Is it something like that? I, I yeah, have I, heard I, that it is very complicated. I, I think that's exactly how it is. Yeah, that that we don't uh, do it sort of end to end because I've heard that in the past uh, that if we if we did all the steps uh, locally, that that would be additional jobs and uh, additional and ga industry. gas price would be drastically low. Yeah, I think so. And and then the, obviously it's a bit of a political hot button, but uh, the whole pipelines every which way <laughs> that, uh, and, and whether they happen and everything, um, it, it it makes it hard to sort of trust that that industry in the long run, uh, whether wow. there's whether we stay reliant on oil or not, mm -hmm. um, if if there's no sort of political will to have these pipelines and everything, wow. it's 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 a problem uh either way um no, no matter where you sit on the the environmental issues with yeah, it uh, exactly. um uh, yeah business wise though if, if those pipelines aren't getting approved it, it's going to make yeah. it hard for the industry but for capitalist perspective it could be a great opportunity for the country right oh yeah exactly like if, if you're looking at it just as, as a business only right um th then certainly uh having all the pipelines to the to the east and down to the states and everything else uh, having all those actually approved um would make things uh, a lot better uh hmm. economically right definitely uh so and we talk about like financial literacy in canada the do you feel that uh, people are more aware uh, aware about saving money budgeting uh like uh in like saving money for like 5% of monthly income, 10% of monthly income. Do people, uh, are people aware about doing something like this or people like just, uh, you know, uh, spend all the money, whatever they earn? Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, an issue I, I'm concerned about quite a bit is uh, uh, financial literacy. It was, a, it was a problem for me when I was younger. I, I you sort of just, you leave your parents, you go to college and you know nothing <laughs> and, and uh, to, to get thrown in that situation is tough. Um, I, I know some provinces are, are taking steps to have financial literacy in, in high schools. And mm -hmm. um, I, I still feel that's uh, maybe not completely the answer because you need to, to motivate right. children of that age. Um, I, I've said on my podcast before, uh, when I was in college, I had a economics teacher hmm. break down the whole, uh, if you invest this much now and, and <laughs> over time, it'll be worth this much. And, 
it, the power of compounding, right? Yeah, exactly. And the, the numbers were right there in front of me, but it's, it still just didn't, uh, it didn't register sort of on a emotional level, some, some kind of momentum that would actually make me go and act on that. So uh, just getting the information isn't necessarily the, the whole picture, I think. That, and, and I'm not sure what the answer is for this, but uh, I, I think we need to do something that, that truly encourages um hmm. people that are younger and even older um <laughs> i've talked to older people too that that also still don't know uh wow. so, some personal finance basics but uh, i i focus on the the younger generations as as somewhere right. where you can um get them where where if, if you can motivate them it it could be it could be a good change um to, to show them those things like if you could save now if you could uh, focus on uh, a high paying career. Right. Um, and, and yeah, just all of that, like uh, to, to hit college and have this mentality where, oh, I'm getting my first credit card and mm. that feels like free money. And I got a student right. loan and that feels like free money. And right. uh, maybe I don't have a job, but now, and my friends want me to go out partying. It, it's, it's just this, this right. terrible mix, right? When you're just starting adulthood. Like um, uh, something like we can say social insecurity. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's this sort of perfect storm of of, of bad choices. <laughs> so uh, that's that's the generation I would focus on. But uh, I, I do think financial literacy is very important, and we're just not quite there yet. Uh, hmm. You're doing a, a good job of that with with your YouTube channel. I try with the, the blog and podcast right. as well. Like the, the the information gets out there. We just need more people to find it and act on it. Right. And, and uh, Tom, it becomes actually even more crucial uh, when the world is seeing like for the past, past two to three years, we have been seeing a lot of uncertainties. Like uh, in 2020, 2021, we have seen COVID. Right now we are seeing uh, Ukraine, Russia war. So the war, so like everything is very uncertain. And because of the war, we are seeing the prices of each and everything will go high extremely high mm -hmm. and and therefore to survive in this kind of situation if you don't have savings if you don't have proper financial planning that would be a big problem so that's why it is essential to know uh, about finances like uh, how much you are making how much you are spending like how much you are saving each and everything should be uh, i mean uh, every individual should aware about uh, their finances and to survive during this kind of situation yeah and, and after everything i just said about needing some uh emotion in it um when it comes to these different tur turmoils from from COVID to ukraine uh it also helps to take the emotion out um <laughs> if you're if you're <laughs> investing regularly right um then th these ups and downs don't matter as much uh exactly. you can you can look at these 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 uh the, the the poor times or the when the markets are down you can but by investing regularly you're you're actually just getting everything out, out of sale um right. which is something I, i'm quite happy with uh it's it, if you if you take your emotions out of it at that point it's you can actually just look at it like oh i can buy this cheaper like if someone's right. just looking at starting investing um when the market's down if, if you're feeling uh, sure enough in what you're doing and, and you're, you're, you're content with what you're investing in, uh, it's, it's the best time to buy. Um, right. it's, it's, I, I remember the, the, the one drop early in, in, in COVID, right. uh, off the top of my head, I think it sort of shaved about 10 years off the TSX. So if, if you, <laughs> if you hadn't invested over that 10 years, it, it was a good time to kind of make up for that lost time. Right. Exactly. But, uh, like uh, it's hard to explain uh, that uh, it's hard to explain for example an 18 years old that uh, hey it is a good time to invest you should start investing during this phase because the market is very cheap and if you buy if you start investing during this period you will get a lot of benefit after 10 15 years if you stay consistent when it while investing so the problem with uh, young people is that they don't understand the power of compounding. They believe that uh, why should invest rather we consider uh, spending on entertainment and enjoyment. So that is the biggest problem, I guess. And that's why people overspend uh, their money and they have no savings left. 
Yeah. Well, the, with compounding, it's such a, a yeah, a, a, it's, it's hard to sell people on it because it, it starts off so slow. If, if you, <laughs> exactly. if, you if, if you follow the, the rule of 72, you could say roughly uh, if, if you expect your, your returns to be 7% a year, it will take 10 years to double. Um, so to go that first decade, doubling a small amount isn't that big of a deal. But it's sort of in that last decade. If uh, if you want to retire at sixty, like that that difference between fifty and sixty, that one extra decade could mean: Do you have five hundred thousand, or do you have a million? Like it, exactly, it's, yeah. It's really that that first decade. Yeah, you're not going to sell people on that too much. It's it's not something where oh look you've you've turned ten thousand into twenty thousand. It's it's it's, it's not uh, yeah. over ten years. It's it's not that exciting. Uh, but it's it's really that that sort of final decade where you're going to double that money one more time before you retire. That's that's a big deal. Right, right. But uh, well, you must have experienced uh, during this the phase of uh, like financial uh, the stock market turmoil that uh, let's say if you tell someone if you advise if you advise someone to invest in like uh, for example five hundred dollars in uh, index fund of uh, Canadian stock market. And uh, because of these uncertainties, uh, the value of five hundred dollars goes down to four hundred. Let's say for an example, and you say uh, to him that, uh, "Hey, you know what? It is a great time that you should enter in the market and buy at cheap price." Now, the first reaction of that person would most probably that, "What are you telling, bro?" It, the market has already fallen 20% and you are telling me to invest more. What if the market falls down more 20%, yeah. right? So this is the toughest time, according to me, for every investor because this is the period where most people can make uh, millions of dollars if they truly consider investing. Yeah, it's... I'm a perfect example of this. So in, I can't remember the month, but in early 2020, where, where we, there was a big drop in the TSX, um, I, I bought a few stocks, a few ETFs, and, and it went down further. <laughs> and so I, I, I was getting my own uh, doubts mixed in there. It's like, oh, did I, did I, and not so much, I wasn't really questioning, was it wrong to right. buy it? I just thought I, I was getting too much into the market timing of it, thinking like I want to buy it at the absolute bottom. Uh, so to, to watch your investment sort of immediately drop in value the next day uh, mm -hmm. isn't easy on anyone. <laughs> but Exactly. And and if if the person is a new investor, it's like horrifying. What is happening? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to see their, their money drop like that. It's uh, but if you if you look at it historically, you can get some confidence. Uh, I, yeah. I, I did well early in investing for me was uh, um, in 2008, 2009, the market had dropped a lot. And yeah, uh, I was really into dividend investing back then. And and to buy those stocks so much cheaper makes yeah. your dividend worth so much more, as long as they don't cut them, <laughs> it makes it worth yeah. so much more as a percentage. So uh, those dividends got got quite large just by by being able to buy the stocks when they were sort of half the value or whatever it was down by. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I saw it again here in, in, in early 2020, where uh, if, if you can, if you can buy, well, it's cheaper. And yeah, right. it, even if it drops further, okay, you didn't get the absolute bottom, but you can't time the market like that. Um, right. I, and, and I don't really recommend market trying to time the market, but, uh, mm. but at least, in that direction if, if 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 you if you if you see a dip like that and right you, you can get in and um even that 2020 example i thought it was going to go a lot longer um it it kind of just bounced right back up again if anybody looks at the historical graphs on this uh right. I, I think it bounced up within a week um <laughs> but yeah uh, exactly it bounced back within a week or so within yeah. uh, like a 15 or I, I guess it would be it would around uh, two to three months to reach at like uh, the previous level. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I was fine when I was and, and I regularly invest, but I was investing extra then and ah. and be, because of the, the sale um, ah. but to 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 invest at that point, I, I didn't expect it to go back up that quick. But I was also fine with if it stayed like that for a year, it was it was hmm. more about uh, where it is eventually it's it's buying it well it's cheap it's it's not 
trying to get it back up so you can sell it again. Uh, that, that wasn't the point. So, um, yeah, it was, it was surprising how quick it rebounded, but, uh, everyone was, was surprised. Yeah, it, it certainly wasn't what I was looking for. It was just it was just a chance to buy something cheaper than I could have the day before. Right, right, right. So, uh, do you, are you a hardcore believer of uh, dollar cost averaging? Yes, a hundred percent. That's that, that that's what I was meant uh, yeah. is that uh, you just invest regularly. So, if if someone's not feeling confident about this idea of of putting even more in when the market's dropping. Um, at least stick to the regular investments. So if hmm. if, uh, if if you're putting a hundred dollars towards an ETF every two weeks or every month, whatever it is, hmm. um, it, it means when those markets drop, you're buying a little bit more. You're right. you're spending that that same dollar value, but you're going to get a little bit more. So you can kind of do it uh, with less emotion to it, with less right. uh, fear. It's just I'm putting in this dollar amount. Sometimes it'll be higher. Sometimes it'll be lower, and and you just stick to it and that that does a lot of what we've been talking about but it does it sort of automatic you don't have to think about right. it literally right. you can have it have it set up to be automatic and um you just you just make those those regular contributions right. and and let it just sort of fall where it does right so uh in india uh, like uh, this concept is called like a rupee cost averaging uh, where people invest on a monthly basis and uh, it is there is a term of there is a term named systematic investment plan uh, by which uh, investors uh, get to invest uh, on a specific date there the money will be deducted uh, by the bank itself so uh, and the minimum amount required to you know uh, start investing with systematic investment plan is like 500 to 1000 rupees so is there any kind of facilities that uh, the Canadian securities uh, offer to the investors? I don't know if uh, at a government level that's done where 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 they'll they'll sort of take money from your your paycheck or your bank account, but it's it's certainly available in the providers. Uh, whether it's a, a, a robo advisor like like Well Simple or uh, a, a broker like Quest Trade, you can set up automatic uh, withdrawals from your bank account mm -hmm. um, to to do this on a regular basis. Uh, and and if it's if it is with a broker, you can get uh, ETFs. You can get a single ETF that covers the entire market. Hmm. Um, and and if it's with a robo advisor, it's even easier. You pay a little bit more in fees, but we're still talking fractions of a percent. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's it's all very simple. Uh, you, you you literally can start off with zero dollars and then just all make right. those oh, regular contributions. Yeah. So just to just to get started is is huge. Like if obviously you need to invest more than ten dollars a month, but if you were to just start at that, right. it's, it's just get get that habit going. Just get the idea like this money's going to come out. It's just another bill, um, and you you can to to some degree just kind of avoid it. Like if you don't like seeing the the ups and downs in the markets, just exactly. Yep. Just make your contributions and and don't look. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. And the, and in the long run, it. Uh, like it it provides magic in return on investment mm -hmm. in the power of compounding uh, let's say if a person uh, uh, does not touch his investment and keep uh, and keeps investing for like constantly 10 years 15 years the number would be massive yeah again i think people can get a lot of confidence from the history and history is not everything things could change in the future but right. um, if, if someone googled the historical tsx um if you look at it for one year it might look very up yeah. and down uh if you look at it five years start steven out a little bit you look at it over 30 years mm. it, it just looks like it's going straight up um mm. so it's it, what what looks like big big ups and downs within a, a few months or a year over a long term it, it really doesn't look that bad and and you can oh, see e even the biggest drops bounce back and then keep on going yeah yeah for sure so now I would like to talk about Canadians investing in the other international markets. So mm -hmm. first, they obviously they prefer to invest in uh, Dow Jones and S and P five hundred, which is of the United States. Uh, wh why do you believe that uh, Canadians are so obsessed about investing in uh, United States? Um, if they're obsessed, I think it's for a good reason. Um, 
often Canada here, we hear the, the, the couch potato portfolio. It's, it's, um, basically a, a quarter bonds, first of all, but, but set those aside as we're talking about the stocks, but, uh, and then you go a quarter Canadian, a quarter U S and a quarter international. Hmm. Um, but in reality the the U S stock market is uh, 56% of, of the entire world market. Yeah, totally um, agree. And, and e even more so it, the, the odd one to, to me that I only clued into really a few years ago, um, is that Canada is only 3%. So when, when you're telling someone uh, to invest, uh, say, a third of, of their, their stock investing in Canada, or some people, just because they're, they're, it feels easier to get into the Canadian market and, and right. maybe they know those companies more, they could be investing all their money in Canadian stocks. And hmm. um, it's, it's only 3% of the world uh, as a market. And, and like I said earlier, too, these aren't... the. Canada is not that diversified as sectors. Yeah. Like we don't have our, our big technology companies and everything like that. Like it's not that yeah. there's none, but it, it's just not sort of well represented. So I, I, I'm a big fan of, of us investing. Um, right. uh, I, I'd certainly say at, at least a third, but again, when you consider 56% of, uh, right. the, the, of us market is the world market, right. then it, it, it wouldn't be that unreasonable to, to invest half of your uh, sort of an investment dollar into the U.S. So, uh, are you indirectly saying that uh, your if for with respect to your all investments, uh, fifty percent is going to the United States? Well, well, not so much for oil. It's tr truly stocks in general. Like, um, w especially with U.S. investing, I'm even more on the ETF side. Right. Um, in, in Canada, I'm I'm more, like I said, comfortable to hmm. to pick certain Canadian stocks uh, mm -hmm. for their dividends. Mm -hmm. I don't want that that extra uh, small drag of an ETF fee. Um, but in the States, yeah, when you have hundreds of companies and right. uh, it, I, I find it easier just to, to get a, a US ETF um, and, and then you're into everything. And, and when there is more technology uh, mm. in the US and international, uh, I don't wanna follow that. I don't, I don't wanna care uh, who the next Google or Amazon is. <laughs> yeah, the, these things come and go. If, if, if I were individually investing in the things, I, I would have been still stuck with, with Ask Jeeves and, and MySpace and everything else that's come and gone. So I, I can't follow technology the same way as uh, like our big five banks here in Canada. That's easy. Right. You can buy a, right. a bank stock in Canada and, and yep. feel comfortable with that. But so with the US for me, it's really just ETFs. Uh, but uh, it's really interesting that you are focusing on ETFs only because uh, even I do believe that rather than investing in individual stocks in the US, it is always better to have the approach of diversification. Or we can say consider investing with the options of mutual fund investments and uh, exchange traded funds because we get diversification at the same time. We get more than like 11-12% uh, return. That's what we can expect from the US stock market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah, I'm definitely pro ETF. There's nothing wrong if somebody wants to invest in certain U.S. stocks. Right. Uh, um, I, but I it, it, say, the risk would be high, right? Yeah, yeah, especially when you're looking for diversification, because because yeah, yeah if, if if you're talking like uh, S and P 500, it's it's a lot easier just to buy that than to to try to buy a a, a certain manually. Uh, produced a mix of stocks uh, and 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 have anywhere near that diversification. Like uh, holding 10 different companies is not the same as holding 500. Yep, yep, totally agree, totally agree. And uh, and finally, uh, I would like to ask is that, uh, what are your thoughts on like uh, the total debt in the United States uh, for investment perspective and Canada too? Because both the countries carry debts of trillions of dollars. Uh, obviously, the United States carries uh, a lot more debt than Canada. So it can impact directly or indirectly. We never know when the market may crash because of the raise in interest rates and something like that. Uh, what are your opinion on this? The the debt has <laughs> increased for so long. I, I, I've never really considered it a factor. Um, uh, is it a problem? Yeah. But uh, I, I just don't look at it as a 
sort of a part of my decision when I'm when I'm looking at at, at individual companies or a market. I, I don't really sort of look at it as a as a uh, sort of the the success of a of a country's <laughs> with, right. with their debt. So I don't know. It's it's it, it's it would be nice to see. Uh, especially here in Canada, I'm more familiar with, but to, to not continually keep adding to our debt as a country. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's not part of my investment outlook. I, I, I truly just look at the individual companies or, or at least right. an ETF um, and, mm -hmm. and not really get into trying to sort of predict the success of a, of a country. And uh, are you comfortable sharing how much percentage do you invest monthly of your income? Well, I'd be comfortable, but I don't actually know the percentage. <laughs> um, um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't really know. Um, it, I, I often um, I, I have my regular contributions, but I, I do when I see these these down moments mm -hmm. uh, have additional money I put in. So I, I don't really know what that is as a, say say an overall year. Right. Um, but I, I think people really need to just like like my ten dollar example it was is a little right. extreme on the, the the small end but the the idea is like put in what you can continue to put money in uh continue to increase it um i i i know people that that do way more than me they, they'll, they'll put half their half their income in right. savings um uh, in investments and that's the the more extreme retire early crowd uh <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah it's I may not know my percent, but, but it's, I've, I've never really even promoted a certain percentage. Uh, mm. Like you, you can say 10%, 20%. It's, I, I think more people see more benefit from just getting started and, and right. putting, putting sure. something away and, and letting, letting that start to build. So, so uh, as far as uh, I came to know your investment strategy, is it like a variable? It's not like fixed number of percentage that uh, hey you are investing 15% uh, of your monthly income uh, of your monthly income to your investment portfolio it's not like that it's like a scenario based if you feel that uh, it's the the stock is available at cheap price you go for it is it something like that um it, it's a bit of both i I, okay. I have a set dollar amount i put okay. in um every month that's just automatic hmm. but uh i i, I I keep an eye on it enough where, where mm. I, I do have additional money I can put in. Um, yeah. So it's, it, it's a bit of both. Uh, and I personally think it's a, it's a great way to do it because you're, you're getting a bit of that, that regular contribution. You don't just want to sit on cash forever yeah. um, because then you, you truly are trying to just time the market. You're, you're thinking, I'm just going to hold this money. I'm going to wait for the <clears throat> next huge crash. And that yeah. may never come. <laughs> like at yeah, least not definitely. to the degree you think it's going to come. Like you, yeah. if you're if you're never investing, you're just sitting on that money, thinking I'm I'm going to wait till it it drops down to ten year old numbers. Yeah, that you may never hit that that low again. So I, yeah, in as a majority, I'd say that 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 regular contribution is is way more useful. Um, but yeah, if if you if you have a little extra money that you can pull together on on some of these these uh, sales as i called them um I, I think that's a good benefit too okay okay uh, uh any final thoughts on uh canadian stock market for the next 10 years uh as to how it'll do um uh, yeah for how are you expecting that the return on investment historical return on investment would increase or it would remain this stable uh I'd say stable overall. Um, a, a ten year span is is kind of enough where where you you get rid of a lot of the the ups and downs. Yeah. Um, I I know you can you can use ten percent, uh, but but when when I do my own numbers, I, I like to use seven percent. It's just on the conservative side. Um, yeah. It it feels more. Um, safe to me that it's like if you predict on seven percent and you do get ten percent say yeah uh, that's better yeah um so if, and if we can also are... say seven percent at as a real return that means uh Fair enough yeah the total return minus uh, inflation right yeah exactly um yeah i don't do it for that reason but you're right uh, <laughs> yeah. uh totally that that yeah you're 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 covering off inflation for that that way but uh um yeah i 
I like to to aim low. Um, if, depending on what people are investing in, maybe they want to say five percent, but it's it just depends on just trying to predict your your investments. Because if someone's trying to figure out what they need for retirement, like right. don't don't put ten percent, don't put fifteen percent, just because like because it looks better. Because yeah. <laughs> like yeah, you, you, you you could do that and say, oh look, I'll have enough money for retirement, but it's it's not a good way to go. I I, would, I prefer to go on the on the the lower side is 7% yep. feels like a number I've always trusted um, and make your, your predictions that way. And, and if it does better, likely will, then you're better off. Yep. That's great. Uh, so Tom, it was uh, really nice uh, to talk with you. We talked a lot more about like Canadian financial market. I learned a lot. Why do Canadians uh, prefer to invest in us? And uh, a lot of things I learned like ETFs and uh, the problem that uh, North America, people in North America have regarding financial literacy. So a lot more things that we learned. So thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Thanks for having me on. Hopefully this helps encourage people to, to get started if they haven't yet, because it's so much easier nowadays with, with ETFs and robo-advisors. Uh, mm -hmm. Back when I was starting, it was so much more confusing on how to even buy a stock so <laughs> yeah it's, it's easy to get going now yeah it's like right now everything is digital so it's like yep. it's everything is in hand exactly yeah thank you so much thanks